Welcome back, guys, to Trails in the Sky the Third, where last episode we entered our first sun door as we watched the Capuas in action with our express delivery service. However, coming under attack in the air by none other than Gilbert, we engaged in a firefight. Then, returning to our otherworldly grandsoul to head into the castle, we encountered Gilbert once again under attack from some burning skulls as we now head to the Queen's Chambers. This one has monsters. No, what? Just an attack too? Hey, farmer, I have some new stragas inside. Would you kind of kindly come in and try them on? I know he likes strings and all, but I'm weirded out when I'm not getting stuff. I think I've got a tattoo on everyone. So, well, at least we can give it to someone else, I guess. Any more treasure chests down the ways? Yep, there's a treasure chest at the meeting spot. <sighs> Who do I attack? No matter where I go, I'm probably going to get myself exploded if I move. So I'm going to move over here. Let's hope to hit them all. Beautiful shot. So I imagine Gilbert's inclusion is a, the game trying to at least have some familiar foe or something to recur. A lot of games do like to have recurring villains after all. Well, even with his blindness, he managed to get me completely. Right, if I kill him on this turn... Oh, I'm not even able to reach. That's sad times. Yeah. Get your revenge. I want to him. Justice must, always must be very close now. Surely. Let's have a look. A hundred battles. Ninety-nine victories. <laughs> I had a tear bomb. What are you still doing here? You're a priest for ages' sake. What? That means I can't stand in this place? I'm upset by your way of speaking. Oh, well, that'd be our hundred victories. We've reached the target. Lived. Of course it lived. Move into corners. Life will be good. Just let Tita sort out the rest. Yeah. I've just moved you too far away to attack, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. I keep doing that to you. I don't know why. You can attack! Great. Tita's still got one more attack. So if I don't kill this guy, it will actually knock him next to it so Tita can get the critical. And that will take up two. Couple of battles for Kev to level. Alright, any chests on this side of things? No. Nope. Well, let's head inside to face whatever fight we're about to face. Because let's face it, it's going to be a fight, right? Face to face. No monster still, but Haze! You've really opened me up to new possibilities. Yes, I have. Haze has been got. Oh, joy. We have Haze and we have Scent. We can equip both. And get a ton of element value. So scent there. Where do I want the haze? Shall I move the septium vein on someone else or? Ah, that's our problem. I'm right in saying that's an any, okay. So move the cast. Move the action to over here. Failing. At least that gives us a bit of a higher value on the base there. And I really, really, really want the haze in. So that would give me Lacuria as well. That makes Kev a quite a good healer at this point. Gives him a 
really massive variety of spells, but not so much on the soul blur side of things. But we did lose cast, which means we lose a bit of our t speed now. Which is not what we want to really lose. So, I think, I guess I remove this. Get our speed up a little bit. And now focus on him as a true caster. And what else did I... What did I remove that I might want on someone else at this point? I don't think I actually got it. Well, sleep could go on someone. Instead of the shield, maybe. She doesn't need that at this point. So that's a bit of an upgrade there. Okay, Kev. Kev has heals. Kev has many heals. He is now primary caster. Now, will it work the way it's supposed to, or the way it's always done, in the fact that only Haze works and Scent doesn't? Or have they managed to change that now? This is the question. What is the answer? Well, single monster in a chest for ages. Well, out on the balcony he is. What? What the? Thank you for coming this far. I entrust this to you. Please, my... Who or what was that? A, a ghost? Perhaps not. There was something familiar about it. It surprised me when I first saw it, but I don't know. It didn't feel all that scary to me. No boss, it seems, yet. But I think I can make an educated guess as to who that is. Obtain a treasury key. Oh, we can go downstairs then. I guess my best way out is going to be warping again now then. Let's go second plane, castle hall. We can also buy ourselves some better stuff at this point. So I can get a cast too. Should be quite nice. So if we're making you pure caster at this point, which is better for you, we may as well get you the good stuff. I might give you shadow something, or maybe not, probably. We need to have that kind of in the upper section of things to be able to get more stuff on, I feel. Alright, scent is in, that's great. Someone else have a cast? Do you know what, Julia? I think you'd be better served with having cast. You are also... If I'm right in saying, our second highest ATS in the party? That is correct. So we've got caster, Kevin. Set up quite nicely now. What else do we look for here? We've got defense too, haven't we? I mean, action two would be nice to get at this point. I mean, I can make an impede two. But impede at those values isn't exactly that amazing, is it? The one I'm looking into is maybe strike for a Tita. Where she can actually critically, massively people, or maybe death blow for Tita. That sounds like it could be quite fun as well. Let's make one anyway, it's a good gem. So let's give you strike instead of defense. And I really should give you a status effect as well, but I'm guessing that works for that. EP1 is just not really what we want on you. Let's give you shield too. It gives you aerial. Right. Sorted out a little bit extra there. Now down below we go. I should save again after sorting out all that stuff. 
never exactly a bad idea, is it? Right, how fast do you cast now? Quite fast. Fire for both. If I hit that guy, I'll use Kevin on you. Everyone else is going to be at this one. Oh, what? Yeah. Wrong target. Wrong target. Bam. 5,000 damage. Right, it's not attack with you. Not attack with you. We need CP. It seems weird to think, but the place I'm going towards at the moment, we originally thought was the Oriole, didn't we? <laughs> it's not anymore. And it looks like Hayes works, by the way. Hayes said duo is perfectly fine. So if I'm looking for any spells to do big damage on them now, I guess aerials are what I'm going to be looking for in the end. And then we also know that we can take them out. That's just the aerial. After all, we don't want to get any closer to the stupid big guy. And we know that Tita's probably going to take out at least a few. One. Stupid exploding man. You have stat guard, do you? And even look. That's fine. Everyone's at 200 CP. I just realised the other thing we should have done is upgrade some more slots with Kevin. But one more battle will get me a level up as well. I know there's one more monster in here. Oh, tell a light. I've already fought the one more monster. Oh well. The doors were unlocked to the treasury. Yeah, this area we thought was the Oriole, but it wasn't. Never was. Is this some sort of elevator? Yes, it connects the castle and a ruined 500 arc below it, but this doesn't make any sense. You're telling me, what's going on here? What do you mean? Well, when I first came to Le Bull, Julia led me through this room and into the area below. But this isn't how this room was. It was way tidier. Indeed, to my knowledge, the room was put in order and then locked, and I was under the impression it was to remain that way. I've seen it this way once before, though. My, my memories of it are getting kind of hazy, but wasn't this the way it was when we all gathered here during the coup d'etat? That's what I was thinking of as well. You trying to suggest that we may have gone back in time? I find it impossible to believe that may have been the case, but how else could I explain this? Of course I could be mistaken, and yet... Well, if we're going to follow what that ghost seems to want us to do, then we'll keep it up and hope for more answers along the way. Then I'll climb on board and see what's waiting for us. Right. It's got to be a boss, right? Down we go. What does the game call this area now? That's what I'm interested in. That's a long elevator. Was the elevator this long when we first went down it? It's a long time ago now. Oh my! Getting from this place is going to be pretty tough. Hmm, might I suggest we return to base for now? I think we should go a little farther inside and see what state the ruin itself is in first. Kind of hard to know what to prepare for if we don't know what fiends we're going to be up against. True enough. Let's advance a little farther before returning to the garden then. Oh, Julia wants to retreat straight away. Well, let's see who we're fighting. Doesn't seem to be anything at the moment. Nothing hidden down here either. like the room seems to chuck forward in little segments as well. Weird on the eyes. This can't be right. Impossible. It's 
something wrong? Something's wrong, all right. This isn't how I remember this place being. But has the ruins layout changed? It is, without a doubt. This area should be a corridor that leads to the first freeway junction. How is this even possible? I don't think you're mistaken. Hmm. Now it all makes sense. What is it, Kevin? Have you worked something out? Maybe, but let's head down on the elevator first. I'm almost sure the answer's gonna be waiting for us somewhere ahead. Alright. Let's be sure we're ready for anything. Down we go then. All the way to the bottom level of the sealed area. This just isn't possible. How are we on the lowest floor of the rune already? Could the space we're in be distorted? Now that alone wouldn't explain how the entire layout of the place has changed. Let's just keep up the pace. I've got a feeling there's going to be something or someone waiting for us not far ahead. Alright. Let's just make sure we're ready first, okay? <laughs> it's like the game's telling you to like save every second now. Watch out for the fiends! The bad monsters might be here. Any treasure chests at the side? Doesn't look like it. Oh! Well now we know something's waiting for us! Alright, doesn't look like there's any new gear still. And I expect the enemy to come with a fair bit of seal, to be perfectly honest. Um, what else do we want to do here? Well, that would be good. That was a quick final dungeon. Right, Kev, let's upgrade a couple more of your slots, maybe? Couldn't be a bad idea to give you a little bit extra. You're going to need the EP at this point. Everyone's slots are upgraded to be fairly good-ish. Says when there's still some slots to be done to level one. I don't think there's any cool super course I can make at this point. Let's level up this one. And this one as well. Get a few more Julia's done. Spending quite a lot. Oh well, bye Seppi. It's all good for the future, right? And now I've got to restore EP again, because if you notice, that was like 25% EP for both Julia and Kev. So now he's at 513 EP, which is great, because he's a spellcaster now, and we like that. Alright, what lays behind this door? We're at 200 CP. We have beaten 100 battles. Oh god, we're not fighting this thing again, are we? Kevin? Yes, I smell again. The same one that you smell before that coffin-like devil appeared. Uh-oh! So you noticed the smell, did you? The dogs of the Church of Good Noses, if nothing else. Horse voice. Who's there? Oh, hello. East boss. Who are you? I was wondering when you'd finally show your face. You're the lord that knight spoke of, aren't you? <laughs> I suppose I am. I do, after all, rule this land of Phantasma. Such a name is only fitting. You may call me the Lord of Phantasma if you so wish. The Lord of Phantasma? Indeed. That's not a name ever mentioned in your beloved testaments, is it, Rhys Argent? So you know who I am too? <laughs> Someone's brushed up on their homework. Well, that's enough time spent on trivial greetings. Listen to me, Lord of Phantasma, or whatever your name is. If all we've seen here is your doing... Then return Grantle to the way it used to be at once. Should you refuse to comply, I shall cut you down here myself. My, my. Your request is so meaningless, I scarcely know how to respond. There's no harm in devotion, but done in excess. It can only serve to cloud your eyes to the truth. Well, do you understand now, Julia Schwartz? What? I see my suspicions were right after all. The grants we've been fighting our way through isn't even the real thing, is it? It's just an imitation of it. A replica of the city created here in Phantasma. That can't be! Could that really be true? It's 
Still, that would explain all the weird things we've been struggling to figure out. Even if it wouldn't explain just what Phantasma really is. <laughs> I'd be rather troubled if it did. What's the fun in handing out the answers all at once? Still, you are quite right, and your understanding is deepening at the pace I hoped it would. I'm rather pleased with you, Cheetah Russell. Huh? I'm glad I am... Um, guess? So all this time, Her Majesty and Princess Claudia were safe. Oh, Adius, thank you for your unwavering mercy. Oh? Your relief strikes me as coming more than a little prematurely. Whoever said that those you care about are safe, it wasn't me. Pardon? No! D does that contain... <laughs> Think of this as the final reward place for you to earn on this second plane. Of course, rewards aren't given for free. If you wish to earn it, you will have to overcome a trial first. An interesting blob blob there. Oh no! It's another of the 77 devils mentioned in the testaments. One of the two gatekeepers of Gehenna and leader of a vast army of minions. Rostrum the Savage. God, are you insane? How do you think you can handle something that powerful after bringing it to life? I need not worry, for I have you to defeat it for me. Enjoy. How many phases is this thing going to have? Does it have ads? It does. There are ads. They are surrounding us. The Rostrum Bugs has poison in it and a healing liquid. I'm a bit worried about this. Just wondering here. Ah, oh, sometimes this attacks behind us as well. I was wondering if I could get the boss too. Well, if this is the way this is going to be, can I affect... Multiple targets, maybe? I can hit the boss and one. That's critical coming up, so I'm probably gonna have to steal that anyway. So maybe I should target whichever one is first. Not enough damage! So who do I steal this critical on? Are oh, you just gonna run right through me, are you? Right, Tita! Blow three of them away! Yeah. Hopefully poison explosions don't happen on me. It looks like spreading out might be the thing to do. I'm a bit worried about the poison that this thing has in it. Let's use attack orders first of all to increase my speed. Kevin's ready with Grail Sphere if we need it, but I think we should just be able to get like a Latira on us pretty soon. Okay, they've got to come in now. So this will take away the damage we took. We obviously want to spread out, to be fair. But if they all come in... Oh, blind? Oh, no, it's supercharging. What kind of area are we talking here? Shall I Grail Sophia this, just in case? That's not what I want to see. I'm guessing I can't impede it. No, I can't. Beautiful. Right, you're blind. This is not a good state for you to be in. So let's start by trying to separate you. We need to cure you, quite obviously. But one of the other things I need to do is finish off some of these weird little things. So I'm just wondering if I can get an aerial that can also hit the boss too. And we are out of power there. So actually, I'm going to move Tita into the corner. I don't know what the boss was weak to. I just want to kill the ads. 
Overrising Crush. Does it seem to be a line attack because Tita didn't take damage? Maybe now we can stay quite close together and heal ourselves. Alright, time to heal up what damage you took there. Uh-huh, now where to go from here? What are you weak to, if anything? Okay, those two elements. I don't know if it's worth trying to attack these elements or not. Let's see what a dark matter does. Now, Kevin going at this guy with spells would be great right now. Can't deny that. But I've got to worry about whatever damage you can do. Tita's not ready to do anything healing-wise, so if I get some attacks in, hopefully we can build that up a bit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking would happen. We've got adds on a critical. Cool, that's some damage. Those two are basically tanking everything at this point. So we've got your critical ready, haven't we? Let's attack with you. Follow that into a critical because it should attack the add too. With that, we should get some serious damage down too. Boss doesn't have much in the way of legs on him left. I can't mass heal us at this point, but Tita might be able to do the backup for us. I don't know. Or will we cure you? One of the two. Which we're probably in worry. Plus, we could probably just spam s crafts now and take it down, but the worry is is that he actually has some more hiding behind everything. So let's see if I can just simply Latira on this turn before he gets to use his stuff. That way Tita will have enough for healing on the next turn. We get some solid damage down and he's well within 1S craft I think now. Is he getting more powerful? Okay, you've got another go coming up. That's bad for us. What if he crushes Kevin? I was calling an ally. Phew, we're fine. Well, if that's the case. One soul blur should do the job, right? Kevin ends up after the boss again. Even with a Latira. Oh, blimmin' hell. Tita can get the heal. I guess I'll rely on Tita for this turn then. Got an AoE of death! Well, that's the boss. If he doesn't have another form, that is. Phew! Oh! <laughs> Not bad. We don't even care about the ally as we went through. Quite fine, no extra forms. Making me panic that last time. Tina level 74 as well. I don't think anyone else is going to get to as we get a ton of sap it. And it's fence free. Uh, 
that thing was crazy. I can't believe we were able to defeat it. But but now. <laughs> that was a truly delightful spectacle. I'll take your award. You've earned it. Oh. Received a ceiling stone. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad we got it. Hmm. Surprised you made good on your promises. Now you're ready to cut down to the chase. What do you want from us? What the hell is the point of all of this? <laughs> Poor Kevin Graham. Poor pitiful Kevin. Please try not to let me down any more than you already have. I'm a phantasm. A shadow. Much as a shadow only exists when there is something to cast it. I too only exist because of something within your number. Do you grasp my meaning? What? Kevin? Hmm. How could I? You're just spouting nonsense. If you think being all cryptic is going to confuse us and lead us astray, you're very much mistaken, buddy. True enough. Spouting cryptic nonsense is simply what I do. That is what you believe, is it? Then it must be true. You. Hmm. <laughs> perhaps I ought to go by a different name after all. How do you think Lord of Nonsense sounds? More fitting, perhaps? I said screw you! Whoa! Kevin? What's wrong with you? Nothing. Don't worry. That's literally just a shadow. It is? Oh! So that was a body double, or an empty shell is more appropriate in this case. We, we barely took our eyes off them! I commend you for noticing. Still, your role in this plane is now over. Add the wings of white to your number, and journey on deeper into the abyss you stand inside. I shall be awaiting our next encounter. <laughs> So that's our next step, is it? Please, they take their overbone theatrics way too seriously. Our Resident Evil dude is gonna have to work on their act if they want to sound like anything more than a walking cliche. Um. Anyway, we're done here. We've got ourselves another ceiling stone to open up. So let's move him back to base. I think we all know who's inside at this point. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. So it's time to unlock those wings of white, right? As chapter two, the otherworldly capital comes to an end. Are we back at the Hermit's Garden? I'm so sorry, Kevin. I failed as your mother. But I'm so tired. I'm so, so tired. At least this way. At least this way, the two of us can... That dream again. Uh, how long is it going to take before it goes away? It had to happen on Rafina's big day, too. I was hoping I'd be able to stop worrying her when I got older, but at this rate, I'm sure she's plenty used to worrying her already. Oh, oh, it's Yuri's. Don't scare me like that. How long have you been in here? For a while. We are supposed to be cleaning the chapel today, but you weren't getting up, so I came to check on you. You seem to be having a nightmare, though, so I thought I'd wake you. Uh, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Reese. I was being a pain for you again, wasn't I? No more than usual. You've been a loser since the day I met you. I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Ouch. Kick a guy while he's down, why don't you? Well, whatever. We don't want to be late for breakfast on Rufina's big day. So let's go and get this done. Alright. Rufina! Oh. Good morning, you two. I wasn't expecting to see you here this early. Are you on cleaning duty today? Yes, but... What are you doing up so early? You've got a long journey ahead of you. You need plenty of sleep. Or you're going to be exhausted before you even get there. I mean, isn't Arteria ages away from here? Well, yes. But I won't be able to offer my prayers to Adios here again for quite some time. So I decided to get up early and pray for all the days I'm going to be missing too. Seriously? That's why? <laughs> That's very like you. Are you really going to be that busy though? I thought you might be able to come home from time to time, at least. 
I wish I could say otherwise, but I probably will. I've only just become a squire, so there'll be plenty of work in store for me. I'll be lucky to find time to sleep, never mind come home. I might be able to squeeze some time into my schedule once I've gotten the hang of the workload. But until then... Okay. And that's where you got to sleep now while you still can. Come on, you've done enough praying for one day, so go back to bed until breakfast or something. Hmm, it's so cold to me. Uh, what? How? I thought you'd want to make the most of the time you've got left with me, but it's like you don't even want me here. <sighs> Did I do a bad job of raising you? I, I never said I didn't want you here. And you might have done a lot for me, but raising me is a stretch. It's okay, he's just embarrassed. He's actually more than happy to talk to you. He's just terrible at showing it. Oh, get over yourself. Is that so now? I should have known. You're such a typical boy, Kevin. They all act indifferent to avoid letting their loved ones know just how much they care. And don't forget, he's at that rebellious age too. How have I managed to survive being twisted around your fingers for so long? Is trying to toy with the hearts of innocent young boys a family thing or what? <laughs> oh, I'd hardly say young. It's been about five years by now, you know. Ah, speaking of which, I think I'm starting to get a craving for some chocolate. Maybe I should pick some up on the way to the station. Quincy Bell, of course, for obvious reasons. Oh, their new mint chocolate's my current favourite. The fresh aftertaste mixes in with the chocolate's flavour really well. I'll admit that does sound tempting, but I think I'm more in the mood for the classic milk this time. That flavour will always be a fun little trip down memory lane for me. Because of how we met. Kevin, you're disgusting. Why? <laughs> I think we all get that warm and fuzzy feeling when we look back on it. After all, the day you came to live with us, Kevin, was the start of many, many new and wonderful memories. I treasure every single one that I've made during these five years. They're all priceless to me. Then... Then why did you decide to become a squire and leave us? It just doesn't seem like the right job for you. Even if you wanted to be in the church, couldn't you have become a sister at the chapel in town or something? I'm sorry, Kevin. Apparently I've just got the aptitude for it, or so I've been told. I feel like the best thing I can do is make use of that and try to help people in the best way I can. Of course, there's always the chance I won't be cut out for it at all, and we'll have to come home anyway. Hmm. <laughs> there's no way a girl as naive as you is going to be any good with the kind of crazy, tough stuff you'd have to do. You better come straight back home once you've had enough. <laughs> really? Well, if it does come to that, I'll be expecting a nice, warm welcome from the two of you. And with that, I believe this conversation has done a lovely job with helping you procrastinate cleaning for long enough. Should I lend a hand? If we're going to do the job, we might as well do it perfectly and have the whole chapel sparkling. And so begins Chapter 3, Golden Road, Silver Road. Two lights. Hmm. I wonder if the other one could be. Scree? What just happened? Julia, did you not leave for a training exercise on board the RSL? I'm so relieved to see you safe, Your Highness. <laughs> I see Sieg is with you too. Scree? <laughs> He is, but, um, I'm not quite sure what's going on. What? <laughs> Long time no see. Hi, Chloe. I, uh, I sure wasn't expecting to run into you here. W what are you all doing here? Uh, oh. It's good to see you again, Chloe. And see too, of course. You two look well. Th thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. I feel like I should be waking up any moment now, but I'm not sure I even want to. Scree! It's a two for one deal. We've got our favourite bird back. Come here, Burb. I see. We found ourselves in quite a predicament, haven't we? I'm relieved to hear that the empty grounds hall you found wasn't the real city, at least, but still. Unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily rule out the real capital being in danger. We're dealing with something that has such great power, it can create a flawless replica of a vast city. There's no telling how far its influence could extend. Reese, surely there's no need to worry or so. 
We have nothing to gain from shying away from the truth. If anything, she's helping me better understand the gravity of the situation we're in. I'd like to help with the investigation if I can. I'm not sure I could do much more than what you're already doing, but I won't drag you down. Scream! But your highness! I'm sorry, Julia, but I'm afraid nothing you can say will change my mind. I may not fully understand the situation we're in, but I do know that it threatens the safety of our capital, perhaps the whole nation. And I did, like, beat the final boss in SC2. SC2? Second chapter. So get off my back? I've proven myself? I'd be a disgrace as a crown princess if I were to just stand by and do nothing while the people I will one day rule are over are threatened. Wow, you're amazing, Chloe. As you wish, Your Highness. Well, welcome to the team. Great, I'll do what I can. So is our next destination that teleportation circle at the end of the sealed area? Yeah, I should let us travel to the next area. Oh, by the sounds of it, it's the next plane. Yeah, that appears to be the technical name for the various areas that make up the land we're in. It's a concept used in the Septian Church, too. Our world is made up of a number of planes or realms situated on top of one another. At the top is the sky where the goddess dwells. Below that is the earth where we live, and at the bottom lies Gehenna, where sinners are judged. Those are the main three, but in between them there are countless other planes or realms, too. So in other words, the farther down we descend, the less the blessings of the goddess will be able to reach us. Hey, can you not say stuff like that? With all the creepy monsters roaming around, it's freaky enough around here as it is. <laughs> you sound like a child who's afraid to walk around the house when the lights are off. Although I suppose that does make sense, given that you truly are a child. I am so not a child! <laughs> anyway... If that fake grants was the second plane, the next one's the third, right? I mean, it sounds obvious, but I'm not sure it's all going in one clear direction or if we might run into a fork at some point. Gold Road, Silver Road? I think straightforward is a safe enough assumption to make for now. And while we might not know what that Lord of Phantasma wants with us, we know it's nothing good. So even if it's not like that, that doesn't change how ugly this could get. So let's get ready for just about anything. Who knows what's waiting for us up ahead? Huh, something wrong, Reese? If you think you might have figured something out, the rest of the class would love to hear about it. No, it's nothing important. You're right, we should start getting ready to leave. It may be worth our while to investigate some of the doors we've encountered thus far too. Yeah, I don't know what's up with those things, but there sure are a ton of them. At the very least, they don't seem to have been placed by any of our foes. I'm all in favour of investigating them too. Well, at this point, we've got two doors that we can enter, if I'm right. Great. Let's get Chloe in for the time being. Just to check out some stats and what ornaments she kind of comes with at this point. I'm always worried now that we might have another graphical kind of at some point. EP2, EP Kaku, Shield 2 could be changed, I reckon, personally. And Cast 1. It's a pretty good setup for her, to be perfectly fair. She's got Latira, she's got all her heals that she possibly wants, she's even got Hellgate. So can't complain about that. I think putting the uh, scent on her would be pretty good. Or putting something just different. Alright, well what we w will need is not but just her. Or someone else too. You ready? Okay, choose by... Uh, that will be what we need. And I'm just wondering actually. While we're here, we can... Go into our menu whenever we want and customize a lot of stuff, can't we? So we can check everyone's equipment at once, which means we can move the glam choker and this off. So if we were to give that, for example, to Chloe, preventing mute, and then we just give her both, really. Julia's a bit more of a powerhouse at the moment, though. Black Bangle Plus, preventing all sleep. Bangle prevent sleep and prevent blind, I guess, will do for Joshua at the moment. What else do we have to put on? It seems like gear-wise, they all have their top gear at the moment, or not, because she starts with a foil, but she actually has the Slammer Sacks to be able to be equipped at this point. And we've already got the Misery Cords for you. That's not too bad there. Orban, Joshua, mine two, attack two, EP two, cast two. I can get cast two and EP cut two on him. Surely work out quite well for us. Of course, I can get EP. Oh, you've already got EP cut two, so let's give that to Josh. That gives him clock down. Brilliant. 
So speed down in medium area, 50%. That's what I'm looking for. Cast 2 might help me out with some other stuff as well. But I don't think we've got enough to make that at this point. I've got a heal gem on you as well. Yin Yang is what we'd really like to see. I guess we'll have shield 2 on you for the moment, though it does lower your ATS. So that's why I kind of want to switch for something else. Uh, I guess that's just the power we're going to have at the moment. I would like a bit more physical prowess on a certain Joshua, at the very least. Oh, he can. The main gauche is here. Hey, it works for me. Hey, new armor. Nope. That's much better. Joshua. Give you the main gauche. They have many in ability now. Let's go drink from the beautiful water. So many people sitting down as well. So many casters, yeah. Well, Joshua dub Joshua's that all around though, so. He can fit in and be what we need him to be. We got Reese as well, who's more the physical. So Joshua's technically my second physical in this app. And then we've got all the panic buttons. All of the panic buttons. Like Chloe's got licked Christ too. Did we actually upgrade that to a two? I can't even remember now. 200 CP confused. Defense plus 50% when 200 CP. Heals 12,000 HP. So it doesn't heal all anymore. We've got Phantom Raid as well, which we did get. Works for me. Do you have any other abilities, Joshua? Supreme Jewel Strike. I don't think we have that. We have Chain Free Camp for two and Sturm two. You need some more abilities there, Chloe? Personally, that's what I reckon. That was for me. We got Sieg! We've got Sieg again. Beautiful Claudia von Ausleys and Sieg. Talking about Sieg, just so handsome. What a handsome man! Considering we're always traveling using warps in the cube, it's hard to be sure, but it does feel like every time we arrive at a new plane, we're moving farther and farther downward. It makes me wonder what's at the bottom of Phantasma. I'm simply glad that Her Highness is safe and well. Still, there seems to be every chance that plenty of others have been captured in the same way. We should hurry on and aid them. It's clear the Lord of Phantasma and on the foe to be underestimated. Unfortunately, we just don't have enough information to try and work out who they really are. We only have more clues to go on. Maybe it's just me, but it's kind of sort of maybe a bad idea to lock the next Queen of La Belle in one of those ceiling stones, right? That Lord of Phantasma should get the death penalty when we catch him. <laughs> Well, let's head to our next area. Should get the death penalty. Julie is just straight on like, kill them. Kill them all. all. Right, let's walk to where? All right, we have star doors. Those who have not proven some battle are not worthy of stepping inside. 100 battles. It didn't actually say we had to win 100 battles, by the way. Bring me the boy of eyes of amber and the princess of an indomitable will. We've got both of these for star doors. So two star deals can be open. And that's it. So star door two. We'll step two next. You can tell how important a character is by the number of crafts they have. <laughs> Princess of a whole country, future queen. Two crafts? What? Those who have not proven themselves in battle are not worthy of stepping inside. Should you wish to be deemed worthy, struggle through 100 battles. Only then shall the door open. I'm opening the door. And hopefully nothing's going to challenge me. That actually might actually happen. She's important to me, damn it. I shall grant you a memory fragment and my blessing. Seems we're in for a fair bit of story time to come, eh? Enclosed is a report on the damage dealt to the former Principality of North Ambria by the Salt Pale. Also contained within is research on the Pale itself. 
Holy City of Arteria, Congregation for the Sacraments. Salt Pell Research Report, Rhys Argent. I hereby present this report to you, Your Holiness, ever at the side of the Goddess. This report contains classified information and may only be read by those with the clearance to do so. Certain sections of the utmost secrecy have also been blacked out. Oh, redactions! Progression of events after the Pell's appearance. As in a bucket. July 1st, 1178, 5.45am. An urgent report came in from Hallius Cathedral in the then Principality, now a state of North Ambria and Northern Zamuria. It stated that a giant white pillar so tall it appears to kiss the clouds had appeared on the outskirts of the city. Bishop Alexei, the one who sent the report, behaved as if extremely unsettled by what was happening. By urgent order of the committee, two knights of the Grosretta, the Eighth Dominion, aka the Roaring Lion, and a squire, both of whom were working on another mission in a nearby nation, were dispatched to perform a formal investigation. They hurried to the scene by the 8th Macabre unit. Please note that the Macabres had only recently been put into use at this point. They arrived promptly. And at 6.22am, this is what they saw. Enclosed as a photograph, the object now known as the Salt Pale. At this point, however, it was far larger than the term Pale would suggest. It was more akin to a massive tower that soared hundreds of arg into the air. The two knights provided the following observation regarding the situation on their arrival. We were met with a mighty hailstorm blowing in our direction from Haliusk, or so it appeared at first, till we eventually realised the storm contained not ice, but salt. The object's surface is completely covered with salt, making it impossible to tell what it may actually look like underneath. The surrounding air has become powdered salt, and it falls to the ground like snow falling on a tundra. The spread of that salinification process was suddenly rapid, and the affected area spread in the blink of an eye. By the time the girls would arrive, the entire landscape of the capital had turned to salt, and the lives of many who lived there, like the aforementioned Bishop Alexei, had already been lost. Yet, the spread did not stop there. A day after the salt pelt first appeared, a vast coniferous forest zone north of the capital crystallized and collapsed. Bridges also collapsed, rendering all of the main highways out of the city unusable. Please note that by this point, then ruler Prince Balman had already fled the country to a nearby nation. Two days passed since the pale's appearance. By this point, roughly half of the entire principality had become a sea of salt. Countless refugees had fled to the southern side of the country because the river Glev stood between it and the affected area. Finally, three days after the Pell's appearance, the salinification process stopped at dawn. As a result, the knights were able to advance on the capital of Halias in the hope of investigating the Salt Pell. That afternoon, they finally reached it. But what they found looked completely different from how the Pell had before when they first arrived in Northambria. In the centre of the salinified area, they found an object that was a mere tier 2.5 argon height. Its surface was no longer blanketed in salt, rather it looked as if something had been carved out of it. It is now believed that the pale's mass decreased as the salinification process progressed. In its smaller state, the pale had lost its power to turn swaths of the country to salt, but its ability to salinify was still very much intact. Anything that touched it, even for a millisecond, was instantaneously turned into salt. It was of the utmost importance to handle it with care. In order to complete the mission without physical contact, the Grouts would have required the use of the sacred tool Glipnir, which was delivered to them from the High Seat in Arteria. Since then, it has been kept closely sealed away deep within the High Seat in Artelia. Still, while the recovery mission was ultimately deemed a success, the damage already caused was equally vast and significant. No damage to the surrounding nations was reported, but it resulted in the destruction of three of the five administrative districts of the Principality, including its capital. Over a third of the po total population, along with travellers from elsewhere, lost their lives. This is to say nothing of the emotional damage caused. Due to its sudden outbreak, the hearts of North Ambria's people were overwhelmed with fear and uncertainty. From a humanitarian and a religious perspective, a swift response from the Septian Church was all but necessary. The decision was made to dispatch personnel to the region right away. And upon arrival, they set about rebuilding the damaged churches and healing of both the physical and mental wounds of the people. Those who were left orphaned in the crisis were taken into gospel facilities where they would be cared for until adulthood. The northern region of the country, which had been turned entirely to salt, was placed under the church's control. It has been a restricted area ever since.
Supplementary notes. After some time, the country's former leader, Prince Balmond, attempted to rebuild the government. But given that he had fled the country during its hour of need, caring only for himself and not his people, all authority he had was once gone. The following year, the country's people led an armed uprising and the Principality of North Ambria was no more. Eventually, elections were held and the country became a democracy, thus bringing about the birth of the autonomous state we, now, we know of now. This was also when the former principality's armed forces were formed as a vigilante court. Given the extreme poverty of the state, however, the majority of said courts said, considered gathering foreign currency to be of the utmost importance. Really, they went off and invaded people to get money? This was how the large-scale Jaeger courts, known as the Northern Jaegers, was first established. As far as the rest of Zemuria is concerned, this is where the tale of the Salt Pearl ends. But a number of very important questions still remain unanswered. Perhaps the most obvious of these is where it came from. Despite the considerable size of the object and what it appeared on the outskirts of a populated city, no information is available regarding the moment it first appeared. The most popular theory is that its appearance was due to something akin to spatial translocation, but no hard evidence exists to support this or any other theory. Of more importance, however, is its positioning in the teachings of the Septian Church. The pale is clearly different in nature to artifacts and appears to be a more fundamental manifestation of the goddess's powers of creation, committee report. With the limits of our knowledge at present, this is as far as we can get to the truth. There are some who have proposed it may be one of the Septarians, but no evidence has been found in legend or scripture to support this belief. Nevertheless, these questions and many others need answering, and the Congregation for the Sacraments continues to study the salt pale to this day. The most accepted proposal comes from those who believe the pale should be seen as nothing more than a gift from Adius, and they continue to consider various means for her church to make good use of it. Of course. Signed Kevin Graham now the bomb. The most realistic of these plans is using it in the manufacture of a sacred tool used for execution. Parts of the pale are cut away using high pressure water and then surrounded with a cylinder made from salt crystal, allowing to be fired directly into the target without requiring the user to make direct contact. Should the bolt make successful contact with a human target, their whole body would turn to salt, killing them in mere seconds. There are no known means for reversing or stopping the process. This approach does not come about flaws. It seems unwise to be careless with an object we still do not understand the true nature of, for one thing. There are also humanitarian concerns with executing someone in this manner. Still, it does bear mentioning that should there ever be a case where a target needs to be eliminated without fail, this would be the most surefire way to carry that out. It should go about saying that research on it is intended to continue into the future. Appendix regarding the aforementioned sacred tool. Oh, we've got ourselves some time taken away. Trial use begins the sacred tool. Top secret work only. Permission grant to use in the execution of... Weisman, obviously. Using the execution of Weisman, fired from Bogum. Results were extremely favourable. No damage was caused to the surrounding area. The target was also successfully erased. Appendix about the target. The target... Is that Angus Weisman? Or what's his first name? I can't remember. Was orphaned by the Salt Pearl when it first appeared. Really? A brief history of... Is as follows. Joins the Septian Church. Joins the Congregation for the Sacraments as an official. Promoted to bishop. Declared a heretic and excommunicated from the church. Five year gaps between everything. And so the side story of the salt pearl is finished. We've received a petrify. How apt. So let's get this straight. He was orphaned by it. And then he also ended up killed by it in the end anyway. That's gotta be... That's the... Is that irony? I think that's irony. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, got some mirror. Well, we learnt about Kevin's weapon. We just did the report. That's karma. Oh, I guess. And, well, I'm not sure. It's one of those terms, yeah. We'll just take it as that. We learnt about that big salt stick. Just think, by the way, how many arrows and crossbow built bolts they can manufacture to one-shot people and the area that is was like you okay, off doesn't that remind well because of course the recent series chernobyl it reminds me of that like the area being cordoned off and all that it's basically like a dead place now you wouldn't want anyone to go near it of course they do tours to it now but still my father-in-law is going sometime soon right let us Whoa, that's the one I need to do. Second plane. K 
Castle Hall? No. Yes. Top floor. Don't we need to go? Oh, yeah. Just use this. Off to another star door. Another story waiting for us. Should we save after that one? That was interesting. In a place where, well, it's kind of a thing that I didn't expect it to expand upon, but it did. Bring to me the boy with eyes of amber and the princess with an inimitable will. Only then shall the door open. Indomitable! We have both. You like all this lot? I do too. I think that's why people who can give trails a try end up really getting into it in the end. I shall grant you a memory fragment and my blessing. Breaking news! The Bell News special issue. The Flying City Falls. The Pearl is safe once more. Glory to the young braces who saved us from crisis! We get a paper? Cool. Feature story. The Liber Arc collapses. Enigmatic object gone in a flash. The mysterious structure that appeared last month over Valeria Lake disappeared as suddenly as it came, collapsing loudly in a giant mountain of rubble into the lake. Many of our readers may have witnessed the moment for themselves, but it seems that it was visible not only from Liber, but from the southern edge of the Empire and from Calvert as well. A small minority argued that the structure may have been a new weapon belonging to the Royal Army, but this turn of events seems to conclusively rule out that possibility. The collapse of the Liber Arc also caused a two-arc high tsunami around the edge of the lake, as expected, that's what I said. But so far, there have been no reports of serious injuries, fatalities, or missing persons as a result of this. Well, man, are they lucky. Unfortunate fishermen. The worst that seems to have been reported is a number of unfortunate fishermen who were unable to escape in time getting covered in water. What was the Liba Ark? According to an investigation by the Royal Guard and Bracer Guild, it was a flying city from ancient Sumerian times. How exactly it came to be above Valeria Lake to begin with, or what caused it to collapse, remains to be confirmed, but it appears to be without a doubt that the International Crime Syndicate, known as the Society, was somehow involved. While this is yet to be officially confirmed, reports suggest that an investigation team in the city encountered a group of Crimson soldiers there, supporting the above theory. This place is just one mystery after another, but we can't let these guys get away with any more than they already have, said a member of the team. Furthermore, Zai Central Factory and the Royal Army are planning to continue investigating the Labour Arc, and to this end we'll be launching a combined salvage operation. Recovering from the shutdown. Around the time of the Labour Arc's collapse, the orbital shutdown phenomenon that tormented the whole of the country finally ceased. As a result, many now believe the city caused the phenomenon. But no conclusive proof of this has been established, and we can only await further research into the issue. Force, the orbital shutdown phenomenon, and the chaos that was created as a result have been a sobering reminder of just how dependent all of us are on augments in our daily lives. Perhaps something similar may ha never happen again, but this is still a good opportunity to reflect on just how much we owe to augments, and perhaps to try and reduce our reliance on them. At least they've already developed technology to kind of counter that kind of thing, which they can then build into all other kinds of technology. Gives them a bit of a heads up on a possibility they didn't think before. They have a solution. Of course, it might just be from that. And they might need a different solution for different things to do the same thing. But still. Crown Princess Claudia has been busy. Politics. As previously reported, Her Highness Princess Claudia is now this nation's Crown Princess. As a result, we will be referring to her as such in all publications moving forward. Crown Princess Claudia wasted no time after assuming her position in meeting with Prince Olivet of the Erebonian Empire. And together, they reconfirmed our two nations' relationship with one another. After the discussions, they both boarded the RCL together... And it's widely expected that this meeting will contribute to ensuring peaceful relations with Erebonia in the future. In addition, the pair plan to both be in attendance at the upcoming banquet to be held at Grandsel Castle. We will bring you all the latest on that in due time. Closing thoughts. As you all know, our homeland of Libel has fallen victim to a vast number of calamities over the past year. Yes, there was a coup d'etat. The bizarre changes at the tetracyclic towers. Coming under the assault of an ancient dragon. Our capital being attacked. And finally, the Liber Arcs... <laughs> appearance as already discussed in this very issue what you may not know however is that there is a group of young men and women who were involved in the resolution of all of these crises. they're still will like will and unyielding determination leading them to their conclusions if not for them these crises may not have been resolved or taken a turn for the worst i'd like to take this opportunity to thank them for all they have done for us thank you you're truly this nation's great hope yeah, these people have been through so much. Also, definition of a tsunami, by the way. I've seen chat saying that two arg is two meters, though. That's not really a tsunami. Uh, definition of a tsunami, I think, means that it's actually a full swelling. Of, it's different from a wave, and it's a swelling and a rising of the water. 
I, uh, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but I think even being two meter, it could still be classified as a tsunami. I think there's like some definition points over that. 